Thanks to Skillshare for supporting this episode of Journey to the Microcosmos. The first thousand people to click on the link in the description can get a one-month free trial of Skillshare's premium membership, so you can start exploring your creativity today. If you've taken a biology class, at some point, you likely had to sit down to a picture of a cell. It was vaguely oval-shaped and filled with circles and squiggly lines, and your task was to look at those circles and lines and assign them labels, like vesicle or nucleus. And this exercise has its benefits, but at the same time, the picture it paints of a cell is by necessity static and uniform. The reality is that cells may be full of analogous parts, but their lives and physical appearance can appear vastly different when compared to each other. The bodies of multicellular organisms like us are built on that principle, with a diversity of cells dedicated to different tasks. But we can see it even more starkly in the lives of single-celled eukaryotes. These are organisms who have managed to make an entire way of life out of a single cell, taking on many different forms to do so. Even as the inner parts remain approximately the same, the final results can be wildly different, whether you're looking at the flexible form of an amoeba or the determined shape of a diatom. Here on Journey to the Microcosmos, we often focus on the organisms, on their fascinating physiology and lives as they navigate the world around them. But what about the even smaller world inside of them? If you think of a cell as its own little world, a little society built on chemistry and biology, one of its most important tasks is establishing its boundaries, separating and protecting the inside of the cell while still leaving it just open enough to bring in essential nutrients from the outside. The essential component here is the plasma membrane, a double layer of fatty acids that surrounds the cell and allows some things to pass while keeping the cell protected. But for different protists, the cell membrane may not be quite enough to establish the kind of boundaries it needs. Ciliates like these pelagatrix encase their plasma membrane within a larger structure called the pellicle, which has structures to define the organism's shape and anchor their many hairy cilia. Other organisms supplement their plasma membrane with another exterior wall, like this colony of green algae called pediastrum. Each of these cells is encased in a protective cell wall. What comes next after the boundaries have been set is, well, everything. It is one big soup of life. Organelles and nutrients swimming in the watery broth of the cytoplasm. And just like a good soup, there is a delicate balance to the cytoplasm. When you're living in a watery environment with a thin membrane separating you from the outside world, water can seep through. A little bit of that water might be fine, but too much can be dangerous. We've even seen microbes burst open and die when they've been pushed past their watery limits. But microbes are not passive in the face of this danger. If you look at the edge of this Frontonia vernalis, you can see its solution at work. There are canals, all pointed toward the same clear circular region. That area is not just some blank space. It is a contractile vacuole, swelling up with water until it is full, and when it is full, you can see it contract and push the water out of the cell through tiny pores, leaving the world within balanced. And as we travel further inside this world, there is a flurry of activity, not all of which is visible to us. Much of that activity is powered by the mitochondria, though unfortunately they are a bit too small for us to easily see. But we think that the thin rods inside this diatom might be the famous powerhouses of the cell. The chemicals that mitochondria use to generate power come from food. And of course, microbes have found many creative ways to obtain food. Some organisms make their own 
turning light into sugar through clever chemistry and chloroplasts. And even though chloroplasts can come in different shapes and sizes, they're usually easy enough to identify through their most obvious trait, their vibrant green color, derived from the light-absorbing chlorophyll that powers the chloroplast. Except, of course, biology loves an exception. There are examples of other colors in the chloroplast realm, like in red algae, that have other pigments that stain their chloroplasts red. Whatever the color, these are organisms whose inner worlds can sustain themselves as long as they get enough light. But other organisms have to go out and seek their sustenance by finding other organisms to eat. And if that sounds like a bit much to you, I will remind you, you are one of them. So humans and other organisms like us have to find a way to introduce that food into their bodies. In some organisms, that gate is called the cystome. And in this glaucoma, the cystome takes the form of an oval, flapping as the organism turns around and assesses a possible meal. But swallowing food? is only one step in the process. After it enters the organism's body, the food gets wrapped up in its own little membrane, like a present. A present stuffed with digestive enzymes that will tear its contents apart. And just as with water, the cell doesn't necessarily want to keep all of this digested food around for the rest of its life, so what doesn't get used gets pooped out through the cytoproct. And if the mitochondria is the powerhouse of the cell, the cytoproct is the butthole of the cell. And then, of course, there are other specialized parts that help different organisms manage the specific challenges of their lifestyle. Like take this Loxodes, which prefers to live in areas of water that are lower in oxygen. Areas that are, to put it simply, down. Down the water column, into the depths. But to get there, the Loxodes needs to figure out just where down is. So the organism relies on its Muller vesicles, a simple structure. It's an organelle that allows it to detect gravity. The vesicle holds a single mineral granule attached to a cilium, and as gravity pulls on the mineral, the mineral pulls on the cilium, pointing the loxodes downward like an inner compass. Now, if we take a step back and survey these little worlds inside of organisms, it is remarkable to realize that these organisms have built themselves, assembled and sustained by their own reactions. They have gathered and made their resources, and from it comes all of these different parts that just seem to work. There's so many bits of chemistry and probability that have to come together to make each of these tiny, remarkable lives happen. And at the center of so much of that assembly, is the nucleus, those round organelles that hold the DNA that describes the organism's existence. Nuclei are universal among eukaryotes, though, of course, ciliates in all of their contrarian glory have also managed to make their own habits out of familiar entities. Ciliates are not content to just have one type of nucleus, no. They have two. The larger nucleus is called the macronucleus, and it is responsible for the day-to-day -day genetic needs of the organism, whereas the smaller nuclei are the micronuclei, and their primary role is to pass on genetic information during sexual reproduction. It feels right to end with the nucleus, the part of the cell that ensures not just the life of the organism itself, but also of its progeny. It is a map that is passed on and shared, promising the creation of new worlds to come. Thank you for coming on this journey with us as we explore the unseen world that surrounds us. And we would also like to say thank you again to Skillshare for supporting this video. We've discussed Skillshare many times, and we've shared courses that can help you with everything from learning to paint with watercolors to understanding how to properly cook and prepare fish. But what if you are not feeling super confident about starting down a new creative path? Well, Skillshare is here to help you with that as well. In the course, Confidence for Creatives, host Eugenia Washington will help you develop some tools to help you reconnect with your self-worth and continue to grow your confidence to do the creative work that you love. Do you battle with imposter syndrome or are you looking for a burst of inspiration? Well, if you answered yes to either of those questions, this class is for you. 
Skillshare is an online learning community that can help you make 2022 a year of new learning, growth, and connection through creativity. With so much to explore and real-world projects to create, Skillshare empowers you to accomplish real growth. It's curated specifically for learning, meaning there are no ads to distract you, and they're always launching new premium classes so that you can stay focused on leveling up your skills. And also, if you're one of the first thousand people to click the link in the description, you can get a one-month free trial of Skillshare's premium membership. Just like a cell is made up of many organelles, this channel is made up of many people who want it to exist. And these people on the screen right now are some of those people. They're our Patreon patrons, and if you would like this show to continue existing and also to get some cool perks, one of them being knowing you are instrumental to the existence of this channel, but others being quite cool as well, you can go to patreon.com slash journey to micro. If you want to see more from our Master of Microscopes, James Weiss, you can check out Jam and Germs on Instagram. And if you want to see more from us, I bet you can find a subscribe button somewhere nearby.